I've test rendered the particles in Maya hardware and they're looking okay. I want to increase their size, vary their size, and make them brighter. Add a little bit of glow to them. In order to do that, I'm going to convert them to software rendered particles. I'm going to close the render view and go back to the particle shape node. And I'm looking for render attributes. Instead of points, I'm going to choose cloud software. If I wish, I can add attributes for the current render type and change the radius, for example. But that's a global radius per object, and I need a per particle radius. I'll scroll down a little bit further, and in the per particle array attributes, I'll find that radius pp attribute that I need. And that's under Add Dynamic Attributes General. I get the Add Attribute window. I'll go to the Particle tab, and I'm looking for Radius Per Particle, or Radius PP. There it is. And I'll click OK. I get Radius PP added to the list of attributes here. If you don't see it, refresh the Attribute Editor. And I'll right-click to create a new creation expression. Particle shape one dot radius pp. I'll set that equal to something. So I'll select it, middle mouse drag it into the expression area, and make my text larger with control and the mouse wheel. I just want to set this equal to a random function. And again, if you've done the magic wand particle tutorial, you've done this before. Set this equal to random value between, let's say, 0.1, comma, 0.5 and a close parenthesis, and a semicolon to end the line. Click Create, minimize the view, rewind and play back, and we get differently sized particles. Maximize the camera view with the space bar. I might need to click in the view, and then tap the space bar. Rewind and play back, and you know what? If you look carefully, each time you rewind, you get different radius. So as I rewind here, you'll see we get different radius. So I want to go back into my expression, right click, creation expression, and add a seed function before this line. So I'll hit enter to add another line and put in seed, parenthesis, and then I just want to grab the name of this node, which is the name of my particle shape node, and control C or command C to copy that, control V or command V to paste it. And I just want to set this to the attribute particle ID, P A R T I C L E, uppercase I, lowercase d, and then a close parenthesis, and finally another semicolon to indicate the end of line. So that's my creation expression to randomize the radius and also to provide a seed value to get the same random result each time. Click Edit, Minimize. Rewind and play back, and when I hit the rewind button, we don't see the radius changing on those particles. So they're essentially fixed now, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's time for us to play around with the rendering. That should be pretty straightforward. I'll go back and render a view. I want to make sure I'm in Maya software. And I get blue dots. I want to assign a new shader to these particles. So I'll select the particles in the view, right click, and choose Assign New Material. It's a volumetric material, so if you want to go through categories, you'll find it under Volumetric. It's Particle Cloud. And now in my Attribute Editor, I see a shading group, and then the Material node, which is called Particle Cloud. I'll click on that and immediately rename it to something more descriptive, like Star Shader and hit enter. Okay, I want these to glow from within, so they don't need to have any color. I'll set their color to black. I want them to be completely opaque and emitting light. I don't want to be able to see through them, so I'll set the transparency to zero. And the incandescence I'll turn up all the way to white. Go back to my render view. Maybe store that version with the default shader so I can compare it, and then render. So now I've got bright stars. Cool. So I think maybe I can change the radius in my expression and maybe add a little bit of glow. So I'll store that image 
minimize the render view. Go back to the particle shape node in the attribute editor. Right click on radius PP, go to creation expression, and change the maximum value. Perhaps 0.3 will be good. Click edit to update that. Rewind and play back the simulation. Go back to the render view. And I think that's pretty good. So that's with 0.5 and that's with 0.3. I'll add a little bit of shader glow. Back to the star shader. Scroll down a little bit. I don't actually need this noise. I can turn that off if I want. It's not really hurting anything, but it'll render a little bit faster with it off. And then the glow intensity, I'll increase that up to 1. And do another rendering. So I'm not seeing much glow here, so I might need to investigate that in my shader glow. There's a little bit here, but I'm really not seeing much in my case. So to the shader glow node, we'll go. In the window menu, I'll go to Rendering Editor's Hypershade. And here's Shader Glow 1. Click on that, and I'll get its attributes in the Attribute Editor. And it's really easy to accidentally click off of the Shader Glow node and lose your attributes here. So once I get them displayed, I'll click Copy Tab down here to make that permanent. And here's what's going on. I want to change the glow type to, let's try Exponential and do another render. When you first use the Shader Glow node, you'll probably see Auto Exposure is on. And that's helping a little bit in this case, but I would recommend against it. And in the scene I gave you, it actually was off. So it's providing a little bit of glow here. It's supposed to be subtle. If we want to make it more extreme, obviously, we could go into the Glow Attributes, increase the color or the intensity. See, that's too extreme. So I'll bring that intensity back down a little bit. You notice that it's very small values here. So I think that's pretty good. I've got the shading of my stars looking all right. I'll go to the File menu and save Scene As. And I'll save this as Fluids Rocket 02.ma.